So if you're joining me now, you're up to step 22. You would have sewn on either your neckband or your hood and you will be ready to sew all of the side seams which involves the sleeve and the body on both sides of your jumper. So to do this, we need to turn our jumper inside out and make sure that we have some space and a flat surface. So what we need to do is we need to line up the edges of the body, so the front and back, on both sides, and we need to fold the sleeves in half and line up the edges of the sleeves as well. So we will be sewing up the side, coming to the corner here, which will be under your armpit, and then going across to your wrist. What we need to do now is after we have lined this up, is we need to pin all of this in place on both sides. We need to head to the sewing machine and we need to sew at one and a half centimeters up and across on both sides and then we need to move to the overlocker. Now, when you get to the armpit, you need to make sure that you are lining up the seams so that when you were to lift your arm and look underneath the jumper, there'll be a perfect cross. That's what we're aiming for. And on mine, it's even more important because the body and the sleeve are two different colors. So it will stand out if it's not perfectly in line. So do your best to maneuver it around so that you can get it as close to lining up as possible. Now with both sleeves and both parts of the body pinned, I'm going to sew from the wrist all the way across and down to the bottom of the jumper. I'm going to do that on both sides at 1.5 centimeters. One side of the jumper is done, I'm now going to stop and repeat on the other side. Now that I've finished my straight stitches, I now need to go through and I need to overlock across both sleeves and both side seams on the body of the jumper. Perfect, so all of the side seams and sleeves on both sides of my jumper are now sewn together and they have been overlocked. I can now turn my jumper in the right way and it should really start to look like a jumper. The final steps will now be to do the cuffs and the waistband down the bottom of the jumper there. We are now up to steps 26 through to 33 and this is attaching both the cuffs on the edges of the sleeves and the waistband at the bottom of our jumper. So at the moment our jumper is really starting to look like a jumper and we just need to add these on for the finishing touches. So as per the instructions, I have gone ahead and I have prepared the cuffs simply by folding them in half and overlocking down this edge. And the waistband, I placed two pieces on top of each other and overlocked up the sides here. We now need to fold these in half, making sure that the overlocking stitch is hidden away on the inside. This will create our cuffs. So we want the raw edges there and there is one cuff. Folding this one up. evening it to make the second cuff and we need to do the same with the waistband folding that in half a bit fiddly Beautiful. We want to make sure that all of the raw edges are lined up and it's as straight as possible. And that will become our waistband. So I'm going to start with the waistband first. Now this is probably going to be the trickiest part because the, of the sheer size of the waistband. Compared to the neckband, it's basically double in size. Okay, so it's going to be a lot harder to pin and a lot harder to sew. And you also have to work with the fact that the stretch of the jumper is going lengthways. 
So as you can see, the size of the jumper is greater than the size of the waistband. But that's fine because once we pin it all in place, it's going to bring it in together and give that effect of a tighter bottom to the jumper. Okay, now what we're going to do is we are going to have, make sure our jumper is turned in the right way. And I'm going to stretch my waistband and put it around the jumper. Okay, I should have both sides of the jumper through the middle of it and the waistband around the edge. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the seam on the cuff lines up with the seam of the jumper, the side seam of the jumper. I'm going to pin this in place because this is going to be our starting point and from here we're going to work our way around adding in lots more pins so that we make sure that the jumper is going to stay together and we're not going to have to re-sew any holes. Now that I've been around and I've placed pins throughout the whole waistband, it's time for me to head to the sewing machine. So I'm going to sew one and a half centimeters all around the top of the waistband. Okay. Now looking at this, you can see the gathering and the pucker puckering that has happened in the waistband and the fabric. That's okay and that's going to happen. But when we're sewing, we need to remember that we're going to try and pull the waistband out as tight as we can to make it straight and avoid any of the fabric overlapping and gathering during the stitching. So I have the arm of my sewing machine and I'm simply going to thread the top half through. Now there's lots of fabric so you need to just take your time and work it in there. And the bottom half is sitting under my arm wheel there. Now that we've finished stitching around the waistband, we want to turn it through the right way and just check all the way around our jumper that we don't have any holes where we have missed the fabric attaching to the ribbing. If you don't have any holes, then you need to move over to the overlocker and you need to overlock this edge here to neaten it up and to add strength. Now when overlocking, it's important to remember that there's not an arm or space for the rest of your fabric to fit, unlike the sewing machine. So what you need to do is you need to make sure that when you are threading your fabric on, that you are keeping all of this back and tucked under. We want to make sure that we're sewing on the edge, but we don't want to cut too much off. Okay, so we need to take our time, stop, and readjust the fabric constantly as we go. Beautiful, so I've now been through, and you can see the overlocking on the bottom edge of my jumper's waistband. I can turn it in the right way, and the waistband is now done. We are now ready to move on to the cuffs. Now that we've completed our waistband, it's time for us to move on and attach the cuffs to the sleeves. This is the last step and then our jumper is almost complete. I'm going to show you how to attach one cuff and then you need to replicate it and do it for the other side. So we need our jumper turned in the right way. What we're going to do is we are going to put the ribbing over the top around our sleeve. So we have our sleeve inside in the middle and we have our ribbing around the edge and the raw edge is all the way around here. What I want to do is I want to wiggle and maneuver it around so that the seam that is that goes underneath the arm lines up with the seam on the ribbing. We need to stretch our sleeve and our ribbing out and we need to pin it. Now obviously you're not going to need as many pins as you used for the waistband but you'll still need a few. So go through and you need to pin the cuff in place making sure that you are lining up the seams and making sure that you are getting the ribbing in line with the fabric so that you don't have any holes when it comes time to sew. 
Now that the cuffs are pinned and attached to the sleeve of my jumper, it's time to head to the sewing machine. So this will be a bit easier to stretch out as you place the arm of the jumper around the arm of the sewing machine. You need to straight stitch at about one and a half centimeters all the way around. Once you've sewn all the way around the cuff, you then need to fold it through the right way and move it around just to check that there aren't any holes. Once you've done this, turn it back through the right way and move over to the overlocker. Before we move on to overlocking, we need to notice the size of the cuff. Now it is very small in comparison to everything else that we have sewn today. It is going to be quite tricky to have the top layer threaded through whilst keeping all of this bottom underside material tucked away so it doesn't get caught in the overlocker. So please take your time with this, okay, and take breaks to stop and maneuver the fabric around. Perfect, my overlocking of the cuff is now finished and I am ready to turn the cuff inside out. Hi everyone, so my jumper is now finished. I've gone through and I have cut off all of the loose threads that were throughout the jumper and I've checked that there are no holes and that I'm happy with the finished product. So this jumper came together really quickly, okay, once you get the hang of um, putting on the waistbands and the ribbing, okay, it's all the same just for different parts so you can move through it quite quickly. Just some design aspects, I think now looking back, my pocket would have looked good if it was white to be able to tie it in, but I love the touch of pink that's throughout it. So good luck everyone and I hope that these videos helped.